Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another Kill Team tutorial. This time on the new uh, Heartkin Salvagers from the Gallo Fall Kill Team box set. Games Workshop very kindly sent me out a review copy of this box set to get some painting videos up for you guys. I put up a poll on my YouTube to see which of the gangs you would like to see first and overwhelmingly it was the Votan. So that's what I'm going to be doing in today's video. I've decided to do the one with the jump pack as I feel he's the most interesting and is kind of a hint of things to come. I very much hope that Votan will get a unit of basically assault marines at some point in the near future. That would make me very happy. Before we get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep doing this crazy thing called YouTube. If you're interested in getting involved in that, there's links to it below. You get access to a private Discord server and a couple of extra videos every single week. Well, a single video every single week, so that's 52 extra videos a year. I think there's never been a better time to get involved. All right, guys, let's get painting vote time. Okay, so here is the Votan miniature that I chose for the tutorial, the one with the jump pack. He's the one that made me the most excited um, for the Kill Team box set. So I was very excited to do him. One of the actual cool things about him is he's actually wearing a normal backpack and then the, the whole like jump system just gets clamped over the top, which I think is a really cool design. And hopefully that can get incorporated into more Votan at some point soon. The model got sprayed black and then a nice dusting of gray sear was then applied and then it was ready for contrast. I started with the Space Wolves grey contrast and applied this to all of his fatigue, so any of the cloth material that is on this miniature. So it's mostly around his legs, obviously not his boots, and then you can get some of it under his arms and around his back and underneath his armour. So there's a few different bits and pieces to try and catch with that. From there we are going to move on to a Blood Angel's red contrast. And this is the first coat of paint we're going to use on all of his armour. So he actually does have quite a lot of armor. Votan miniatures are extremely well armored miniatures. So you need to take your time, make sure you find all those bits and pieces. It does get a little bit tricky when you get up to the jump pack because then I had to make the decision as to which parts of the backpack were going to be red armored and which bits were going to be silver and which bits were going to be black and so on and so forth. It wasn't too tricky. It was just, you know, take your time, figure out what you want to do and go for it. After the red has been applied, it's then time to move on to Black Templar. And that's going to be for his boots. There isn't really too many other details. I managed to do all of the like jump jet thruster parts on his backpack and um, black as well, just because it reminded me of like a shuttle, uh, like a NASA shuttle using the black vents on the bottom. So I decided to go the same route with that. I debated the uh, like fuel canister on the back as well but i decided that, that would go silver just to have a little bit more of a metallic um aspect to the model i also did of course the entire pistol because the gun casing is going to be black and it's going to be easy to just knock in the rest of it in with silver when i get to that point wildwood contrast was then used for his belt and pistol holster which is a recurring theme i've noticed with miniatures as of late and it's kind of an annoying one to be honest is that this miniature has got a, a belt around his waist with a pistol holster in it with a pistol in it and he's also holding a pistol so i don't know what the deal is i have seen it before where they've done things like the handle for the pistol is you glue that in as a separate piece so if he's holding a pistol you don't glue the handle in so therefore it looks like he's drawn it and i wish they would go back to that because it is starting to annoy me <laughs> lead belcher silver was then used for all the metallic parts in this model on other Votan miniatures, we usually do incorporate a little bit of gold, but these are basic troops. These are salvagers that are sent in across the void to uh, collect scrap material technologies from old broken down hulks and ships. So he's not going to be a particularly high ranking officer uh, or member of the Votan League. So I'd left out pretty much all the gold. From that, they were all base coated and it was time to throw a shade on. So for right on flesh shade, as the same thing I did with all the rest of my Votan miniatures, my Votan playlist. It works as a really nice shade for all of the red, the boots, if there's gold, it works a treat for that. And it doesn't do too bad on the cloth as well. I'm not gonna talk about how I based the miniatures. Everyone is gonna base the army differently anyway, so yeah. Thunderhawk Blue is what the layer point of choice for all of that cloth and material that I did Thunderhawk at the beginning of the video. As you can see, I'm taking my time, not hitting any of the red armor and following up on the large flat areas of cloth and leaving all the recesses nice and dark. The 
This can be tricky. Uh, some of the parts are very close to the red parts. It's very tight gaps. Just remember that if you can't get a brush in there, it's probably a nice shaded area. So don't stress yourself too much. Just leave it as the base coat and unwashed part. It'll look fine. My fist on red was the first of two layerings that we did over the miniature's armor just to add some punch and color to it. Obviously the red is not shiny enough as it is now. Votan are, like I said, quite a well-off race. Um, their armor and equipment is pretty pristine and well-maintained, well-built. So they're gonna keep it in immaculate condition. It's not to say it's gonna get chipped and scratched along the way, but these guys weren't at war, they were salvaging, so you never know. The second color I'm gonna to jump to is Evil Sun Scarlet, and that's once again gonna punch that color up again. So it's basically the same as the last stage, hitting all the large flat areas, but leaving all of the creases and recesses nice and dark. And the jump is of the Evil Sun Scarlet stage is the same thing again, you're just going further down and leaving some of the previous two shades of red behind. As you can see, this is really gonna make the Votan miniature pop. Adding a ton of visual interest to him. I love that color. I have an entire Votan army painted like that now and I've never seen the tabletop. So at some stage soon, I hope to do that. Rhinox hide was then used as a, a highlight for the leather we talked about earlier, his belt and his pistol holster. Ironbreaker was then brought in as a highlight and layer up all of the metallic parts. So his belt buckle and the pistol holster of his pistol, yeah, the barrel and a few other workings of that. Some of the like safety railings and stuff he's got on his jump pack. And then obviously a lot of the detail on his axe was done with the Ironbreaker, really bringing it up and making it pop. Most of the time when I'm layering on metallics, I go back to a lead belcher. But like I said, these are basically dwarves. They know how to make good equipment. So I wanted to give it a little bit more shine. Across the Corvus Black to layer any of the bits that we did, the Black Templar contrast. So obviously his jump jet vents and his faceplate. I decided to go for all enclosed spacesuit look for my salvaging group. So they all got the helmets, which I think just makes perfect sense. If I'm going to send a team across into a vacant old space hulk that we don't know what sections of it have air and oxygen, gravity, which bits aren't, I'm not going to go across with no helmets on. So I have them all enclosed in their kind of sealed suits. And I think that's the only squad in my army that's going to have that. So they're going to stand out a little bit from the rest, which I think is really cool. Bold Titanium White was then used to uh, apply a solid coat to any of the bits that you want glowing. So obviously the lens in the center of his helmet, he's got a, like a glow pack in the middle of his chest like Iron Man, and there's a few buttons and switches on his backpack. I just hit them with a coat of the, like I said, Bold Titanium White. And then we just come in with Talazar Blue and apply that over the Bold Titanium White areas, which gives us a nice um, kind of like a glow effect, very minimal effort. There are better ways to do this, but they take so much more time, effort, and use five or six paints. So my way is two paints and about two minutes work. So for army-wide projects, I think this is probably the way to go. After that, I simply added a couple of transfers and called the miniature done. I've really enjoyed painting this. I've forgotten how much I do actually enjoy Leagues of Votan miniatures uh, for painting. I'll definitely get the rest of the salvagers done very soon. But of course, I'm gonna have to work on that Beastman Kill team in the next video, so stick around. And if you're excited for that, don't forget to subscribe. Okay guys, and there we have it. The Hardkin Jump Pack Warrior, which is what he's named on the back of the box, which I think is so metal and 90s, uh, is now complete. Painted up to match the rest of my Leagues of Votan army. I'll be getting the rest of this kill team finished up in the next couple of weeks. Now, once again, bring me up to date with every single model and unit being done for Leagues of Votan and on my channel. I will, of course, be doing the Beastmen very soon, and then we'll be putting up how to paint the scenery, like the little drop pods and the containment units as videos for my Patreons. So if you want to check those out, once again, check that link below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe if you aren't already. It really does make a huge difference. And ask me any questions you'd like in the comments below. I will get back to each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys for sticking around at the end. I'll see you in the next one.